Hi, I'm Tom, Amateur Radio Call Sign N8FDY, and it's another meter review. This time we're doing the triplet MM650. This is a 6,000 count meter, and its uh, unusual feature is that it's a $70 meter that is IP67 rated, so waterproof, dustproof. Uh, there is a little catch. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's see what's in the box. Okay, comes with a nice uh, little case. And let's see what's in the case. Okay, we got a manual. And it's a pretty good manual. Of course, we have the meter itself. And the leads, we got a thermocouple, we got an adapter for the thermocouple, and we have these special little plugs. These are the plugs that help it become waterproof. You must have these four holes must be plugged before it to be waterproof, and it must be with these test leads. They have a little special... Uh, into them that are a little different than normal test leads. It still is the uh, banana plugs, but there's a little ridge here that somehow mates with what's in there to help make it waterproof. So you need to have the leads connected and you need to have these little plugs connected. I'm going to stick that in there add in there and now it is IP67 so you just got to remember to do that it has a backlight that comes on automatically and it also has a uh, light sensor so if you're in a bright light falling on the screen it turns off the backlight it also has a flashlight which is not too bright, but it does, uh, in the dark, it definitely would help. Let's go over the features. It's a 6,000 count meter with a basic DC accuracy of 1% plus or minus uh, three of the least significant digit. It's true RMS, has an analog bar graph. It does min, max, and average. It has a hold. It also has a relative or delta. It'll do AC peak voltage. It has a thermocouple. It has low Z for AC and DC, which is mostly used by electricians. It's got a built-in flashlight. It's uh, IP67 water and dustproof. It has a three-year warranty. And it's included with uh, four AAA batteries. Now let's get to measuring. All right, let's do some DC measurements. By default, the meter voltage range is AC and the current ranges are AC. So you have to remember to hit this button to switch them to DC. So here's our two and a half volts. And this is a 6,000 count meter, so it uses all four digits for two and a half volts. Then we go to five volts. Again, it's using all four digits. But when we exceed 6,000 on the face of the meter, then it switches to only using three of the digits because it can only go up to six is the highest number it can use on the leftmost digit. So now at the seven and a half volts, we are uh, using only three of the digits. But now 10 volts, we're still only using three, but if, it, uh, if the meter would actually read exactly 10 volts, then it would use the four digits again. As you can see, the readings all met the accuracy specifications, but the accuracy specifications were lower than average for this group of meters. Now we're gonna measure some uh, DC current. 
This meter always defaults to AC on the current and volt ranges, so you have to remember to press the mode button to get it back into DC. So I have it on microamps, but it's in AC, so now we'll switch it to DC, and it reads 0.7 and 0.8 microamps, and this is a, a 0.89 microamp source. Let's try a little higher value, because it is hard for meters to be accurate on this lower end of the range. Okay, this is 9.21 milliamps. Let's see what the meter says. 9.1, not too bad. This is 99.0, and the meter says 99.0. This is 131.8 microamps, and that's what it says on the meter. It is interesting how this meter works much better than its specifications would lead you to believe. Okay, now we're going to switch to the milliamp range. When you do that, it goes back into AC, so you have to turn it back on to DC. And we're at the one milliamp, and sure enough, it's one milliamp. Now you may wonder how I know what these currents are and why I think they're accurate. And that's because I've measured these with my Keithley uh, MM6500, which was calibrated recently. Since the Keithley is 10 times more accurate than my best handheld meter, uh, that's why I'm using the Keithley as a source to make all these measurements, and then I compare that with what the meter under test does. 9.98 milliamps, and the meter says 9.98. This is 99.4 milliamps, and the meter says 99.3. Well, as you can see, all the current measurements I made were within specifications, and the, most of the current specifications are average for this group of meters, but the, the amp ranges were below average. I'm using my uh, arbitrary waveform generator to generate some... Uh, 60 hertz AC voltage, in this case 2 volts. Uh, I discovered that this uh, output of the uh, generator is not exactly what it claims to be. When you set it for 2 volts, you don't actually get 2 volts. So I brought out the uh, most accurate handheld meter I have, because I don't want to drag the Keithley out here. And uh, I'm showing you what the voltage coming out of the generator is and what the voltage the uh, uh, triplet thinks it is. And it's not too bad. It's uh, pretty close. The generator is putting out 2.0008 volts and the uh, triplet is, thinks it's 1.997 volts. The AC volts met the accuracy specifications. Uh, the only problem was it couldn't resolve the one uh, microvolt, so it couldn't read that at all. But it was, uh, all the other ones were within specification, and the specification for AC voltage was average for this group of meters. Now we're going to do some resistance measurements. First, we're going to short the leads together to see what resistance is in the leads. So they're connected together, and the meter says zero. That's suspicious because most of the other meters say this is about 0.2 ohms. So we won't have to use the delta function, or the relative function, to zero these out because it claims are already zero. Now that's suspicious right there. Let's try the one ohm resistor. Well, the Keithley says this is a 1.004 resistor. And this, this meter says it's 1.0, which is very close. It's uh, difficult for meters to be accurate at their uh, lowest end of a range. And this has a 600 ohm range for uh, resistance. And so one ohm's pretty low. So that is interesting. Here's 10 ohms, and it reads 10 ohms. Here is a 100.069 resistor, according to the Keithley, and it reads 100.2.
Here is a 1.0001 kilo ohm resistor, and the meter reads it as 0 0.999 kilo ohms. It's interesting that these values are very close, much closer than the specifications that uh, is in the manual for the resistance range. Now we're trying the highest value resistor I have on the board that this meter can read and it is a 9.97 mega ohm resistor and this guy reads it as 9.93 mega ohms. The meter met its specifications for all the resistances I measured. Uh, most of the resistance specifications are below average for this group of meters. Uh, the only one that wasn't was the, uh, was the mega ohm range. All right, now we're going to test some capacitance values. We're starting out with uh, 10 picofarads, and of course the meter can't read that at all. Here is 100 picofarads, and the meter shows it as 30. Here is a 1.005 nanofarad, and the meter reads it as 1.03. Here is a 9.921 nanofarad, and the meter reads it as 10.06. Here is a 99.51 nanofarad, and the meter reads it as 100.5. Here is a 1.009 microfarad capacitor, and the meter reads it as 0.991 microfarads. Here's a 944.5 microfarad capacitor. The meter reads it as 1,035. The capacitance values that the meter could read were all within specification. It could not read the uh, 10 or 100 picofarad capacitor. And the specifications for capacitance is uh, very broad. Uh, too broad to be useful for tuned circuits, but uh, it should be okay for troubleshooting. All right, here's the red LED. Here's the yellow LED. Here's the green LED. It's barely lit. Here's the Schottky diode. Here's the small signal diode. Here is the rectifier diode. Well, we're going to try continuity, and we're going to use the Probe Master 8000s. They don't fit all the way down because this has that special uh, IP67 seal that is meant to mate with the uh, leads that came with the meter. As you can see, it latches, but it latches for a long time, so it misses anything quick. So I know the, uh, the supersonic uh, continuity testers won't like that at all. But uh, if you know how that works, you can work around it. All right, let's go through the pros and cons of this meter. Well, the good parts of this meter, it's under $100, and it meets specifications for all the measurements I've taken. Uh, most measurements are more accurate than the specifications indicate. Uh, the fuses seem uh, very reminiscent of what they use in uh, CAT 3 and CAT 4 meters that uh, are third-party certified, but of course this one, I couldn't find that. Uh, it's IP67 water and dust resistant, and the fuses are accessible from the battery door, and it has a three-year warranty. Well, the not-so-good parts of this meter. Uh, there's no indication of any third-party testing for safety. It's below average DC volt specification, below average AC 10 amp range specification, it's below average resistance specification, and below average capacitance specification for this group of uh, 6,000 count meters. Also, to maintain the IP67 rating, you must keep the leads plugged in 
and it has to be the leads that came with the meter and you have to keep those uh, little special plugs that came with the meter plugged into the holes you're not using. Interesting meter. It uh, feels pretty solid. It um, To change the batteries you have to take out four screws uh, mostly because you need to keep this sealed to keep it waterproof so it's pretty unavoidable um, but the good news is is when you open the battery compartment you also are in the fuse compartment so you can change the fuses without disassembling the meter the um, it like I said it feels solid the uh, detents are good it's uh, very difficult to get it in between uh, there's a lot to like about this meter uh, unfortunately the specifications aren't one of them um, it's pretty uh, wide specifications for accuracy but as you've seen with the meter it uh, reads very close but again that's the whole dilemma of Yes, this one unit that I tested is uh, way closer than the specifications of the manual. But if you're the unfortunate one who gets the one that is way off, but still within the specifications of the manual, the vendor won't do anything because he says, well, that's what was in the manual. So uh, that is a dilemma. The other dilemma with this meter is as solid as it is and as is really uh, good the fuses look uh, this should have been uh, third-party tested for safety but I can't find anything on here that says it was or in the manual there is a brochure that I used when I bought this meter that said it was uh, certified by a third-party lab but uh, it, I can't find uh, anywhere where it says it in the manual or on the meter so, eh. if you use it for uh, battery operated and, uh, you know, the typical category one or the uh, boat anchor measurements, which is category two, uh, or any kind of uh, messing with your power supplies, you should be all right. But uh, I'm not the one to judge safety of a meter. There's other people on YouTube who do that. Um, I just uh, like to have them third-party tested, but this isn't. And it's a $70 meter, and if you keep the leads plugged in and keep those extra two plugs in, it's waterproof. Uh, so, really, it's up to you. It's... Uh, the specific, accurate specifications are disappointing, but like I said, in most cases, except for the uh, capacitance, it, uh, you know, it's not too bad. This also comes with a, a three-year warranty from Triplet, and uh, they definitely honor the warranty. I was, uh, the first version of this I had was refurbished, that I bought off their website, and... Uh, it had some problems with the current ranges and the voltage range and I uh, contacted their tech support told them what was going on and within two days I had a brand new meter and uh, they didn't even want the old one back so sometimes warranty is important and can help you out so anyway there's lots more 6,000 count meter reviews coming up uh, then we're gonna go into the 10 to 20,000 count and then we're gonna go into the 50,000 count but that's in the future. Uh, I will have to take a break to put up an antenna, which uh, I've been putting off for a while, but uh, you can't really put it off any longer if I want to get it up before the winter. So anyway, this is Tom, Amateur Radio Call Sign, NAFDY, saying uh, 73, and take it easy.